I'm here with Ilka Tumi, who is going to be our keynote speaker on day three of the Eden 2019 conference here in Bruges. Ilka, it'll be fascinating to hear what your keynote speech themes will be about. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because I'm trying to cover both the big picture and a uh, bit more about the detail. So I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and the transformation of education. Looking how the um, 20th century educational systems are uh, being changed because of a wider use of technology, digital technologies, and specifically artificial intelligence. So I'm looking the the kind of future of work and transformation of social and economic structures. And in that context, I'm trying to see how education can respond to those demands that uh, will be important in the future. So that's the kind of big picture. So I'm also saying that the devil is in the big picture. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm talking about the detail, because you also need to understand what these things that we call artificial intelligence, what they really do. There's a lot of uh, newspaper articles, there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, hype around this. Um, there are huge policy uh, pressures to do something about AI. I mean, like the European Commission is now planning to gear up the annual investment in artificial intelligence to 20 billion euros. Uh, and uh, they are investing, I mean, a lot of money. Uh, all different continents are doing the same thing today. And everyone is saying that this is the biggest thing since the invention of electricity or or oil, or I even heard UNESCO director saying that um, this is the biggest change in human history since the Paleolithic time. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly huge expectations, uh, kind of policy level expectations. And we, of course, have all read and seen Hollywood movies. We have read science fiction and, and seen Hollywood movies. So we kind of think that we know what AI is. And we project these imagined AIs uh, to the future and think that everything is going to be different. Uh, it's very important to understand what these systems actually do. So they are very limited systems. Uh, they can do very interesting things, but only very few interesting things. So in a way there is a kind of... A um, Cumbrian explosion currently going on, that, uh, that some very simple basic principles are being applied in very many different areas and you get really exciting kind of uh, uh, outcomes. You can uh, see Mona Lisa speaking and talking and you can do fake news and you can do all kinds of uh, uh, r simulated humans reading news, uh, news reports. You have robots that are able to jump and dance and you have all these kinds of exciting things, and cars and autonomous vehicles that can drive on their own. So it seems that there is a lot of happening, but the underlying technologies are really very few and, and, and only kind of uh, specialized. So what I'm going to also talk tomorrow is about uh, the relation of learning theories to this AI. So artificial intelligence uh, in name is about intelligence. So for learning, learning theorists and educators, it's actually quite interesting that what these guys mean by intelligence. Uh, on the other hand, the, the current hype in artificial intelligence is about what people call machine learning. And again, the word learning is there. So it's kind of interesting to see what kind of learning happens in these systems. You talk about autonomous vehicles, you talk about Mona Lisa talking. These are, these are things that, that are, are very entertaining and very, very, very good in terms of getting us around the, the world and so on. But what about education? What aspects of AI can we apply to education? Well, there are very many applications already currently and obviously because artificial intelligence is, is uh, high on all agendas now, um, many digital technologies are sold currently as artificial intelligence. I mean, it's difficult to sell anything to schools in the next couple of years without claiming that it has some kind of artificial intelligence. Uh, the problem, of course, has always been that um, for teaching, uh, technology never is an answer. 
So it's a combination of teaching practices with uh, kind of material tools and, and, and things that uh, make teaching possible. So whether it's Blackboard or whether it's, it's a textbook. And what we uh, are currently doing with AI tend to be solutions to the kind of current problems in teaching. So for instance, one area which is very popular is automatic um, assessment of um, exam in exams and tests. Um, because currently we do uh, teaching for tests quite a lot. So in many countries it is really very important socially to uh, succeed in, in tests. High stakes testing is, is a big thing. But it's only in some countries. So uh, it also should be understood that uh, the ways that we use these technologies are very different in different cultures and different uh, contexts. There's a certain Ray Kurzweil who talks about the singularity event when we get to the point where um, supercomputers become more powerful than we are. And you know, do you think we'll ever reach that point in in our history? Well, we have supercomputers, or they called that. We the the answer to that question is actually quite um, illustrative, I would say. Because if you look at the learning models that current AI systems, these uh, kind of data-driven or deep uh, learning models use, they are, um, from learning theory point of view, they are um, what we call associative uh, learning models. Mm -hmm. These are something that uh, all living beings actually use. So these are low-level learning processes that are um, possible for insects. And, and pigeons and, and rats and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that's the only area where the current AI systems, uh, these uh, data-driven AI systems work or operate. So uh, they should be called artificial instincts. Mm -hmm. uh, and the learning models are really similar to what, uh, what uh, biological kind of beings develop uh, during, I mean, millions of years or thousands of years. So they are kind of, reflec uh, kind of reflexes and um, the learning models uh, are uh, purely behavioristic. So Thorndike or Skinner type of models, uh, yeah. they are really, uh, that's the level where they operate and they cannot move beyond that. There is another kind of artificial intelligence which, uh, which is very often used in education. I mean, for the last 30 years, most of AI in education has been uh, on what people call symbolic AI or expert system based approaches mm -hmm. where you represent the knowledge and you represent students' knowledge and then you match uh, these basically so that you can do, let's say, intelligent tutoring systems or something like that. So the symbolic AI is a different animal and it's not on the newspapers today. Um, the thing that you see today is data-driven AI, which is this kind of very primitive, instinctive uh, uh, learning model. Symbolic AI is a bit more complicated. That's something that uh, theorists like Piaget maybe was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Conceptual development, conceptual models, uh, cognitive science is very much fo focusing on that mm -hmm. uh, during the last uh, decades. What we don't see today is the higher level cultural learning. And that's the area where like Vygotsky or Paolo Freire maybe mm -hmm. would be talking about how culture makes us, how we learn uh, from the more culturally um, kind of competent adults, uh, languages, conceptual systems, sciences, uh, cultural behaviors, uh, social practices. That is a level where currently AI simply does not exist. Mm -hmm. And the Freirean question about uh, how we actually change the society through learning, that's obviously something that is, is um, nowhere visible today. Do you think we'll ever get there? Is, is this something that we will ever achieve with machine learning? Well, if you, if you say that an insect can learn something, uh, quite complicated behaviors, um, using associative approaches, uh, you can climb up to some extent. But learning theorists like Vygotsky from the 1920s already uh, emphasized the point that uh, there is a qualitative change 
uh, when we become competent humans. So he was kind of comparing like uh, learning in apes or, or primitive cultures and, and non-primitive cultures in the 1920s, which meant uh, cultures where you have conceptual systems like sciences and so forth. So these are cultural artifacts in a way, you know, cultural systems of meaning, and, and we learn them in social processes. And that's something that you cannot do instinctively. So that is an area where the current kind of technical architectures of AI, uh, in my view, cannot achieve. So that's a level of meaning. Um, we can do kind of behavioristic uh, refle uh, re uh, kind of reflex type of uh, responses to changes in the environment. That's what the current systems can do to some extent. But to create those environments and to operate in meaningful worlds, that's something that current systems cannot do. That's the area of learning, of human learning. Okay, it's been fascinating talking to you about AI and the future and education, of course. Thank you very much.